Okay, we have here another interesting integral. We've got the integral from zero to one. One minus x to the one third over one minus x to the four fifths dx. Now for this one, I think I have three different ways to do it, or maybe at least two and a half different ways. One way we could do is, I think series would be a good way because just noticing with this, even though we've got four fifths, this is a lot like one over one minus x. And then this with our balance from zero to one, we could use the geometric series formula on it. But today, don't feel like doing that one, so we'll skip that. The other way we could do, I think is pretty straightforward methods. Now it would be easier if the coefficient, sorry, if the exponents were integers, then we could factor it and maybe just have, end up with just power rule or something very simple. But even with the exponents, the way we have it, I still think probably with a substitution, we could do something similar. I didn't even try it, so I'm not positive, but I think like u substitution and factor or whatever. But for the third method, what I want to do is kind of generalize this and the actual methods I use when doing it are probably going to be similar to the second one. I'm not really sure, but what we can do is get rid of the exponents on this. And what we can do is find a general formula for this, setting the exponents to A and B. We need B not equal to zero, but for our problem, we've already determined we want A equal to one third and we want B equal to Four fifths. The reason I say b can't be zero because if you plug in a zero there, you're going to be dividing by zero in the denominator. So to get started with it, we'll just get rid of this over here, and I want to start with a u substitution. So for my u substitution, let's substitute. I want to clean up this part right here. So I'm going to set my u equal to x to the b, and then solving for x, we have x is u one over b. Take a derivative with power rule. This becomes one over b u. 1 over b minus 1 du. We'll go ahead and substitute. First noticing the bounds are going to stay the same. 1 is 1, 0 is 0, so we'll just bring that over. And let me actually get an x to the a value. If we just take this, raise both sides to the a, we get x to the a is going to be u a over b. So then plug everything in. Now we can use this right here. This will be u a over b. The denominator just becomes 1 minus u. Now for our dx value, let's take one over b out front as a constant, and then we'll have the rest of it, u one over b minus one du. Now let's take this piece here and just distribute it back in to get a simpler looking term. So we've got our one over b in front. This numerator becomes u one over b minus one. This part, when we combine, we get the same base here. We also have this common denominator on the with the b here, so I can write this as a plus one over b minus one, all over one minus u du. And then for this thing right here, going from zero to one, I wanna notice the similarity we have to a formula for the digamma function. So we have our formula over here to the right for the digamma function of z. Notice it's pretty similar to this. We get the integral from zero to one, denominator's the same, the input, on the um, digamma function is gonna be just this C here. We have the euler mascheroni constant over here, which is something like 0 0.577, but that's not really gonna, that's just a constant value, so we don't have to worry, we're gonna, we can deal with that later because that's just, we can just rearrange the equation for that. The trouble I have right now using this formula is right now this here is a one, and over here we've got something completely different. But rearranging it into this form is really going to be no problem. All I need to do is create a second copy of this digamma function formula. Now what we have here is the exact same formula we have here. The only difference is the variable. So our input into this here is s, where here it was z. And then all I want to do is take these two formulas and just subtract them and see what we have. But now this formula right here, this is in exactly the same form as our integral right here. The inputs on this is just going to be right here, the s value and the z value. So what we can do is, if we have the integral in this form, we can express it as the difference of two digamma functions. In our problem, the s value in this formula is going to be just 1 over b. And the z value is going to be right here in this. This, this z value here is going to be a plus 1 over b. So that's gonna allow me to just use this formula. We have the one over B still in front around this whole thing. We're gonna have digamma of Z, which is this part. So we have digamma A plus one over B minus digamma of the S value, which is one over B. 
and that's going to be our general formula for whatever our a and b is. So now we just need to get back to our problem, which is solving this integral when the a value and b value is one third and four fifths. So let me clean up the board. All we really need to do is plug into this, but we also have to reduce because we still have it here in terms of the digamma function. Okay, now after we plug in our a and b values into this formula here, I end up with five fourths, digamma five thirds, minus digamma five fourths. Now for each of these values here, I just noticed that these are both greater than one which is gonna allow me to use this reduction formula that if we have digamma of z plus one, we can reduce this to digamma of z plus one over z. So how it'll work first for digamma of five thirds, we can just reduce this by one, so this becomes digamma of two thirds plus three halves. And then for this one, same, same kind of thing, same idea, reduce it by one, we get digamma of one fourth plus four. So let's plug these two values in right here. We still got our, we have five fourths in front. This is gonna become digamma two thirds plus three halves. Distributing the minus sign, we have minus digamma one fourth minus four. But now in order to try to get this to a numeric value, we want a value for digamma one fourth and digamma of two thirds. Well, for this two of these, there's two values I derived in previous videos. So we have up top here the formula for digamma of one fourth. So we're all set with that one. We have the value here for digamma of one third. I believe I also did digamma of two thirds. I just can't remember what it is. So what we're gonna do is let's use the digamma of one third value to get to the digamma of two thirds value. We have the reflection formula that tells us that if we have digamma one minus C minus digamma C, this is the same thing as pi cotangent pi of Z. So if we make the z value one third, we're saying digamma of two thirds, the value we want, minus digamma of one third. This is gonna be pi cotangent pi over three. Cotangent pi over three is one over square root of three, so I can write this as pi over square root of three. Let's solve for a value of digamma of two thirds, just adding pi square root of three, but adding our digamma of one third value on the right. But now all I need to do is plug this into digamma of one third. So we're gonna have pi over square root of three minus pi two square root of three minus three ln three over two minus Euler Mascheroni constant. But I can combine these two terms, just creating a common denominator. And so this is gonna become just pi over square root of three minus three ln three over two minus Euler Mascheroni constant. So all I need to do is take this value here and our digamma one fourth value here and plug it back in. Now I'm gonna to wanna to combine this three halves and minus four. So minus four I can write as eight over two. So then we still have our five over four in front. Digamma two thirds is gonna be this. I'll distribute a minus sign into this formula, so this becomes plus pi over two plus three ln two plus the constant, and then three halves minus eight halves minus five halves. Euler Mascheroni constants are gonna cancel. Let's see what simplification I can get. Maybe if I factor like a one half out of everything, I can bring five eighths in front. Let's try to group common terms. So this is gonna become two pi square root of three plus, this is gonna be just a pi. Um, this here becomes six ln two, and this one becomes minus three ln three. And then this here will become just a minus five. But then let's just put these two terms together, get a common denominator. So doing that, what's gonna happen, we can write this as two pi over square root of three plus square root of three pi over square root of three. I'll uh, factor, like factor a pi out and put these together, we'll have two plus square root of three over square root of three. So we'll take this and put it back. So for my final solution of this, we just have five over eight, two plus square root of three over square root of three times pi, plus six ln two minus three ln three minus five, and that's it. Okay, so there you go, kind of a messy answer. Maybe next time I'll choose some nicer exponents on this, but there you have it. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.